In this little video, I'm gonna show you how you can install the analytics tool Mixpanel with the help of Google Tag Manager. We'll install events, identify a user, and I'll show you how you can utilize the notification feature. Hi there, and welcome to another video of measureschool.com, where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can install Mixpanel with the help of Google Tag Manager. Now the tags, triggers, and variables that we use in this video will be later on measureschool.com slash Mixpanel. So be sure to check that out, and let's dive into today's topic. So today we're gonna to talk about how we can install Mixpanel with the help of Google Tag Manager. And Mixpanel is really a great tool for event driven analytics, which is great in cases of a mobile app, but also useful when you are operating a web app, such as a software as a service, and you want to get detailed analytics on the events and the user behavior within your app, but also track your users more closely. So Mixpanel gives you a great set of tools to track these interactions. So how can we get started? So to install Mixpanel on your website, you first need to install the general Mixpanel library that loads on every page of your website. So we can go over, if you have opened up a new Mixpanel project, you will get prompted with installing this. I have tried this out before, so I actually need to go to our help center here and go into the tracking tutorials, which we will work with right now and we get our mix panel code. So all we need to do is mark this all and then copy this, go over to Google Tag Manager and within tags, we can create a new tag. Notice I have already some Google Analytics tags installed here, but we will install our mix panel tag, which will be our general mix panel library and we will deploy this on all pages. So far so good. As the product, we don't have unfortunately Mixpanel available yet. So we need to go with the custom HTML tag. And before I paste this in this window here, I actually wanna deploy a pattern that is important for tag sequencing. I have to save this up. So we see here a pattern and this is used for custom HTML tags in conjunction with the tag sequencing feature of Google Tag Manager. Why is this important? Well, this library should fire first before we send in any more information into Mixpanel in order to ensure that our library has loaded first before we send in any more data into Mixpanel, we can use this tag sequencing pattern for custom HTML tags. So the tag can actually report back to Google Tag Manager that it has fired successfully. I won't go into detail too much. Just make sure if you deploy this pattern, you will need to enable the container ID and the HTML ID in your variables menu. So this block actually tries to execute a piece of code, which is our mix panel code. So I'll paste this in here. And we actually don't need the script tags you see around here. And if it's successful, it will report back to Google Tag Manager that we can go ahead and fire our other tags. Now, one thing we need to change is the your token here. So we go back to our mix panel admin section and under the settings, we have our token. So let's copy this and go over to Tag Manager and implement this here. That should do it. Let's continue and deploy this on all pages. Let's create this tag and go into our preview and debug mode. Reload our page. We see our preview and debug mode and we see that Mixpanel has fired successfully. Right now it doesn't do anything for us because we haven't tracked any information yet, but the library is now available so we can send in data. 
So to mimic what we have set up with Google Analytics here, which is a normal page view tracking, we can also emulate that with Mixpanel. So how would we do that? Let's go into a new tag. This will be a Mixpanel tag. And we're actually gonna track an event. So I'm gonna call this the track view and it will be a normal page view tracking. Again, custom HTML tag. And this time we're gonna enter a special kind of code. Let's head back to our tutorial section here and track our first event. Here is a little example, which we can copy and go back to Tag Manager, paste that in here. Now we want to customize this, obviously. We want to track an event which is called page view. And we can optionally pass in any kind of attributes that we might want to track with this page view. So in our case, for example, page path would be something that we want to track. Let's get rid of this last attribute here. Now, obviously we would dynamically need to change this value of this attribute. And we can simply use our built-in variables with the name page path. All right, so far so good. Now our pattern that we deployed for the tag sequencing will come into play because we only want to fire this tag after the library has actually loaded. One little error I see right here, there's a comma which shouldn't be here because in an object, the last key pair value needs to not have a comma. So let's get rid of that and go back to our tag sequencing. We need to deploy this after the library, otherwise no data would be received by Mixpanel. So we can go into the advanced settings here and actually go into the tag sequencing and we only want to fire this Mixpanel track event actually after our general library loaded. So we can click on this fire attack before Mixpanel fires, which should be our library. Now we can also prevent our data to be sent in if our library fails. We won't do this now. This won't be necessary because the data won't re be received anyways. So let's continue. And since it's a page view tag, we want to fire this on all pages. Let's create this tag. Refresh, go back to our demo store, refresh this. And we see our general tag fired, but also our mix panel page view tag. So now data is recorded. We should be able to see it in our mix panel admin section under live view, which is like the real time reporting within Google Analytics. And we see a new event was just fired by a person coming from Berlin, where I'm at right now. I have a distinct ID, which is an ID that mix panel assigns once I enter this domain. And we can look at the profile activity, but also at the page view in depth, so which will feature our page path that we have sent in. Now I also see that there is a current URL that is passed in automatically. So maybe this page path wouldn't be necessary per se, but this is just to show you that you can send in any kind of attributes with this page view that you might want, which is a little bit like in Google Analytics custom dimensions. All right, the next thing we want to tackle is actually making this user identifiable to the system. So right now we have a John Doe here, which doesn't tell us much, but since this is a platform that's very event driven, but also very user centric, we'll be able to identify the user once he logs in or puts in his details into any kind of other field. So how would we do this? Well, there's a special call for this. Let's go over here into our tutorial section and create our first user profile. Again, we would need to have the library loaded, which we have. And then we have an identify call here that we can use. So let's copy this. Go over to Google Tag Manager and create a new tag. This will be our mix panel tag. This time it will be an identify call and it will fire on really any kind of form. Again, we'll go with the custom HTML tag. Let's implement our tag here. We would need to surround it with script tags.
and we would be ready to go. But we want to obviously change this information here based on whatever the user's attributes are. So let's see how we can pick this up. Within our demo shop, we have, for example, a contact form. And we can enter a name here. And when I click this send button, I will keep the command key pressed. So it opens up a new tab. And we see that I have already installed a trigger for form submits, which fires on this form submit. No tag really fires, but we can look into the variables. We have installed a custom JS variable which is the email input variable. If you want to find out more about how to install this form trigger, but also the email input variable, then head over to our video about the email input variable, which I will link up below as well. And this email input variable basically just looks to this form and extracts the email address that was entered anywhere in these fields and makes this available to us in a custom JavaScript variable. So we can use this variable in our tags as well. So let's do this. Let's remember our variable name here and head over back to Google Tag Manager. And instead of identifying the user with a number, I will identify him with his email address, which I will fill out by dynamically pulling that from the field, which I can do with our email input variable. And the same is true for the call mix panel people set. We want to set the email address to the actual user. Now there are other features that you can install, first name, last name, and so on. The information is in the contact form, but I won't bother pulling that for now. This is something you can customize for your website. Let's get rid of this. That should do it. Let's continue and fire this on any form field. So I have a trigger here, the form submit trigger, that should do. Let's create this and refresh. Let's go back to our contact form and do this whole test again. I'll put in name, email, and a message. Like I would send that off to this online store here click on the send button with the command key pressed, our tag fires and our mix panel identity form fires as well. So the user is now identified. Back in our live view, we would be able to click on the user and we see there's a new user profile. There's not much information here, but the email address is now changed. So if I generate a new page view, go back to the home page here, our data will be forthcoming associated with this user. So we have gone through identifying the user, sending page views in, but what about events? Well, this is also really easily done with the help of Google Tag Manager. In another tutorial, I have already showed you how to track button clicks. I still have this trigger here available, which I can just adjust to send in a another event in order to track whether somebody clicks on one of these add to cart buttons. So let's do this really quickly. Let's go back to our tutorial here, send in another event. This time, copy this again. Go back to Google Tag Manager, open up a new tag. Of course, this will be a mixed panel tag. We are track a new event, which is our add to cart click. Custom HTML tag, as always, and mix panel track this time will be add to cart. Now this time I don't want to send in any kind of information. I could send in the product and so on, but this won't be necessary for this demo. So I'll just get rid of the whole object here in the back and just keep it at this. Now, one thing I forgot to do at our last identify call is actually do the seg tag sequencing, which we will just do here for now. We'll again choose our library to fire first. And 
attach our tag to our trigger. So we have here our add to cart click. That should do it. Let's quickly correct my mistake from before. The identify call should only fire on the tag sequencing after the initial library loaded. That should do it. Refresh this all. Go back to our page. Refresh this. Now I'll click the add to cart button with the command key pressed. We see when we go back that there was a GTM click and on that GTM click, our general library fired because we put this into the tag sequencing and our mix panel track event fired. Once we go back to mix panel, we have three new events and also our add to cart event is now tracked by this user who has identified to the system one time. So Mixpanel gives you really a flexible system to send in any kind of data in event form or in user property form into the system and lets you then segment, funnelize, analyze retention rates, do your own formulas and so on and so on. It's also possible to track revenue with this platform, but that's something I would leave you to figure out by yourself. One feature that I want to point out is the notification feature because you're actually able through this library of Mixpanel to send notifications to your users. So all you need to do is choose how you want to deploy this here. An in-app message is for websites, pretty useful. So we can go for websites here. We can put in any kind of title. choose in their editor to open a link afterwards, for example. And then show this message to all your users. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you this right now because I have a local machine running here. But what you can do after this step is define a target user group that you want to display this to with the properties that you have defined in the events or in the identifier calls that you have prepared through Google Tag Manager. And then you'll be able to pop this message up on a scheduled basis or as soon as possible to these users. So it's a really great feature to make your analytics actionable with a message that you want to display to these users. Don't forget at the end of this tutorial to publish your tags, triggers, and variables to all your users via the publish button. So it will de be deployed on your website. And that's already it with this week's video of measureschool.com. If you want to follow along with all the stuff that we did in this video, then head over to measureschool.com slash mix panel, where we have a handy template for you that you can download and upload right into your Google Tag Manager account. So you have all the codes that we used in this episode right in your Google Tag Manager account. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and go over and subscribe to this channel because we will bring you new videos every Thursday. My name is Julian. Till next time.